Hello everybody, how are you doing? In this lesson, we are going to start to model the airplane of our final project. And for this, I'm going to start by deleting all these initial objects from the scene. So I can press the A shortcut key to select all the objects and press the delete key to delete all of them. And now, to start the creation of the body of the airplane, I'm going to create a cylinder because it's a very similar form to the body of the airplane. So I can press the Shift A shortcut and click on Mesh Cylinder. And now, just after creating the cylinder, I'm going to edit the count of segments around the cylinder so that the airplane is very low poly with a very low count of polygons, okay? So, just after creating the cylinder, I can come here in the property, Properties panel and edit the Vertices field, okay? So, in this Vertices field, I'm going to reduce the poly count to 8. With 8 segments, we have a nice round shape, but with a very low poly look. And now, I'm going to rotate the cylinder to the horizontal position, okay? The ideal here is to rotate the object so that the front part and the back parts are aligned to the y-axis and the sides of the object will be aligned to the x-axis of the view. If we model the object this way, it will facilitate the use of several tools related to symmetry and mirroring of the object, okay? The front part of the 3D view in Blender corresponds to this green ball right here in the navigation icon, okay? So if we click this little ball, we will see right up here in the left that we are in the front orthographic view. And if we click in this other ball back here with the Y, we will see that we go to the back orthographic view, okay? And when we click on any of these red balls of the x-axis, we will see that we go to a side view. So, as I want the front part to be aligned with the y -Y, I'm going to activate the rotation tool, and instead of rotating on the y-axis, I'm going to rotate it in the x-axis. So, after activating the rotation tool, I will click on this red arc of the rotation manipulation icon. And now, to make sure that I rotate precisely 90 degrees, before I click on the arc and rotate, I'm going to hold the control key and then I will click on the arc and rotate. With that, we make sure that the object rotates with an interval of 5 degrees and we can see the angle that the object is by looking at this number here in the upper left corner of the 3D view. So, to rotate the object precisely with 90 degrees, with ju we just have to hold the control key and rotate the object with the chosen axis until this value here comes to 90 or minus 90 degrees, okay? This way, we make sure that the object is precisely in the horizontal position. And now, we can enter the edit mode of the object so that we can model the airplane. To do this, I'm going to click here in the interaction mode menu in the upper left corner of the 3D view and click on the edit mode. The first thing I'm going to do is to adjust the proportion of the cylinder. To do this, I can click on this red ball here to position the 3D view in the side view, okay? And now I can select all the components and using the scale command that we find here in the toolbar, we can actually click on the right side of the toolbar and drag if we want to see the names of the tools. And here I'm going to activate the scale command, the scale tool. And now, if I click on the y-axis of the tool, I can scale it a bit. The proportion that I am going to use is more or less the double on the horizontal axis that it is on the vertical axis, okay? You don't have to use the same proportions that I am using. 
but if you want to create a model similar to mine, you can use more or less this proportion that I am using. Now I'm going to activate the loop cut tool here on the toolbar to insert new edges, new loops in the model in a way that I can make it a bit more round, okay? The same way that is the design of our airplane. So after activating the loop cut tool, I'm going to click on any of these horizontal edges of the model, okay? I'm going to start by using just one click. And now, so that I can add more loops, instead of creating all of them one by one, immediately after creating the first loop, I'm going to the properties panel of the loop cuts tool here, and I'm going to increase the number of cuts to five. So just go down here and increase this number of cuts field, field to five, okay? And now, with this number of cuts, we'll be already able to manipulate the form to reach the design we want. Now, I'm going to activate the Select Box tool up here, and now I'm going to start to manipulate each loop at a time by selecting it, and for this I'm going to hold the ALT key and click on any of the vertical edges. And now we can start to scale these loops or by using the scale tool here on the toolbar so we can with it active we can click and drag to scale down or if we keep the select box tool active we can scale the loop so i'm going to select this one here with the alt key we can scale the loop using the s key of the keyboard the s key of the keyboard activates is the shortcut for the scale command. So if I select another loop and press the S key, I can scale it. Now another one, Alt click to select, S to scale, Alt click to select, S to scale, Alt click to select, S to scale, okay? Because I want to reach this rounded arc Okay, that is smaller back here and a bit bigger up here with this arced form around the body of the object. Now I'm going to start to work on the cabin of the airplane. So this is going to be a round structure in the upper part of the cylinder. And I want the cabin of the airplane to be in the middle of the structure. So to do this, I'm going to select the central edges. So I'm going to select this loop here and this one and this one. And I'm going to move them a bit forward so that the cabin is created more to the front of the airplane. So they are going to be created from these polygons here. And so that the cabin is created more to the front, I'm going to move all the loops one by one by selecting the loop with the ALT key and move the loop forward in the Y axis using the MOVE tool. So just click in the loop with the ALT key pressed and with the MOVE tool move the loop a bit forward like this. Maybe now I can press the S key to scale this loop down a bit always checking if this profile is arced, is round like the reference, okay? And now, as I want to create the, the cabin using these four faces up here, I can uh, position the 3D view in a side view by clicking on this red circle, and I'm going to move this front vertex to the front a bit, just a bit with the move tool, and these back vertices here a bit backwards, like this, okay? This way, if we check the, this form from the upper view, we will see that it's a bit more round, more oval at least. So now I can activate the select box tool in the toolbar and activate the face selection mode up here and select 
these four faces with the shift key pressed and now before extruding the cabin itself I'm going to activate the inset faces tool and I'm going to click and drag inside a bit to create this small gap between the airplane and the glass okay so we have this small space and now I can activate the extrude region tool and click on the addition icon and drag to create the extrusion now I can press the S key to scale this polygon a bit down or use the scale tool and click and drag to scale these upper polygons a bit so that the cabin gets this round form so now we can consider the cabin done and we can start to work on the wing of the airplane so I'm going to select these three faces here on the side with the shift key pressed I'm going to click in all of them and now I'm going to create this wing only in one side of the plane okay so I'm going to create this first wing only on the left side of the plane and after we finish the modeling I'm going to show you a command that we can use to mirror everything we model in one side of the object to the other side this way instead of worrying about modeling everything in both sides we just have to worry with one side and in the end we mirror everything okay so I will position the 3d view in the side view by clicking the X red circle and now I'm going to activate the inset faces command so that I can click and drag to create this thinner polygon strip that better matches the size of the wing that I want so now I can activate the extrude region tool here in the toolbar and click and drag on the addition icon to start the extrusion process as the original faces were pointing down like this the extrusion will be pointed to this direction okay and that's not exactly what we want but that's no problem after the extrusion we can position the 3d view in the front view in the front of the airplane by clicking uh, I'm just seeing that by accident I created the front of the airplane pointing to the back part of the scene okay so if we take a look here we will see that it's pointing in the back orthographic view but that's not a big problem because the important for us is that the sides of the airplane are aligned with the x-axis of the 3d view this way the mirroring tools that we are going to use in the end are going to work properly so now I can select the move tool and move these polygons of the tip of the wing up a bit I actually want this to be a bit pointing up a bit okay so it has this small inclination and the size of the wing can be about uh, two and a half squares of the grid like one and a half the size of the the body of the airplane so we can see that the size of the body is two squares and we can create the wing with about two and a half squares okay something like this you can tweak the proportions if you want but I'm going to use this now I'm going to select the polygons of the tip of the wing again and I'm going to adjust in the upper view I'm going to use the scale tool to make it very straight by scaling it in the X axis so it is very straight like this now I can select the move tool and move it forward because I want this front part of the wing to be very straight I'm actually going to scale it down because I want the tip of the wing to be smaller than the base of the wing and then I can select the move tool and move it 
to the front again. Now I think that I'm going to activate the scale to once more and scale these polygons on the Z axis to make the tip of the wing a bit thinner. And I think that this way it's fine. And now we can start to work on the shape of the wing so it gets round in the back part, okay, like this like were the wings of this kind of plane, this old plane. So I needed to select these vertices or the edges of the tips of the wing. So I can activate the edge selection mode up here. I'm going to activate the move tool and I needed to select only the edge of the corner of the wing and move it a bit to the center so so that we can start to have this round shape in the tips of the wing like this and now so that we can make the the center part of the wing also a bit round here in the back part i'm i need to create some segments in the middle of the wing okay and for this I'm going to use the loop cut tool. Let me finish some adjustments here. Okay. But now I'm going to use the loop cut tool and create some segments in the middle of the wing so that I can adjust the edges and make this shape look round like this. Okay. So I'm going here in the toolbar and I'm going to activate the loop cut tool. And I'm going to click on one of these edges. Let me drag it to the tip a bit like this. This one I'm going to let here, almost in the tip. And I'm going to select the scale tool and scale it on the X axis so that it gets straight like this. Okay. Now I'm going to activate the loop cut tool again and insert one more loop and this time it's it is already straight so i can now now that i have those segments i can activate the move tool select that edge in the back of the wing and move back a bit and the other one that i just created select only the vertical edge and move back a bit the the ob the point here is to make that back part of the wing look round, okay? Because those old planes had this back part round like this. This is kind of a second world war airplane, okay? Now I can just make some small adjustments by moving these edges to a good position. We need to make some tests and I think that that's it for the wing. Now I can start to work on the, the wings, on the back wings, those in the back part of the airplane and in that vertical wing that we have back here. So I'm going to start with the back horizontal wings that are, are going to come down from these two polygons over here so with the face selection mode active i'm going to select these two faces and i'm going to activate the inset faces command and click and drag to create a small inset and now i'm going to adjust these polygons before i extrude the back wing okay so i need to make this selection straight uh, near to the shape that I want the wing to have. So I'm going to activate the move tool and activate the vertex selection mode up here. Okay. And now by moving those vertices, I'm going to adjust this shape so that is more like a rectangle, a flat rectangle. Okay. So I can start by selecting the, these vertex in the upper part that are going up and move them down so that the selection is more straight. Maybe I can select those front vertex 
and move them back a bit those two vertices move them back a bit on the y-axis okay that wing is not too big and looking from the side this is almost there but if we take a look in this shape by looking on other angles so if i rotate the 3d view now we will see that the position of these vertices will be kind of messy because we just moved them on the y-axis and so that those vertices are perfectly aligned to the shape to the polygon that was there before that was uh, an inclined face we need to adjust those vertices on the x axis as well okay so after adjusting them in the horizontal axis we need to make sure that those vertices are aligned in the shape by moving them in the axis axis in the x axis okay so i'm going to move them here by rotating the 3d view and checking all the angles as possible and now I believe that I have a good pair of polygons here so that I can extrude my rear wing. Okay? So now I can activate the face selection mode again. Select those two faces we just adjusted. And activate the extrude, extrude region tool. And extrude these faces like this as we have seen the the extrusion will follow the alignment of the original faces so it's not going to be a good angle at the beginning but we can adjust it by using the move tool so we can get it straight on the x-axis like this maybe pointing a bit backward uh, we can use the scale tool to make it flat on the x-axis like this and make it thinner on the y-axis by scaling it down like this maybe we can move it backwards a bit to make it more aerodynamic uh, maybe we need to do some adjustments in the tip so we can scale it down to make the tip thinner like this well if we looked from the front of the airplane by pressing the y-axis the navigation icon we can see that the inclination of those wings are very different so maybe we can move the back wing down a bit so that the inclination of the two wings matches a bit more okay something like this and now we can start to work on the shape of this back wing I want to make it a bit round in the front part so I'm going to activate the loop cut tool here in the toolbar and I'm going to click on one of these edges to insert a new loop and to make it straight I'm going to activate the scale tool and scale it on the x-axis okay and now I can adjust it and I think that I will let me see i will move it here to the center and i'm going to insert a new loop with the loop cut tool okay and now we can move those edges again to the front so that we can make this round shape okay and we can do as we did in the front wing that we select these vertical edges and with the move tool we moved them back and forward to adjust the shape or we can uh, make this adjustment by using the vertex selection mode but so that i can make sure that looking from the top view i select both vertices the one from the top and the one that is below back there i need to activate the transparent mode the x-ray mode by clicking on this button over here okay when this button is selected whenever i create a selection window 
everything that is inside this selection window is selected, even if it's behind the geometry that I am seeing. Okay, so I'm going to activate the vertex selection mode and with this X-ray button active and the select box tool active, okay, I can create a window and I am sure this way that the vertex that I am seeing and the vertex that is down there, both of them are selected. Okay, so looking from the top view, if I do not have this vertex, this X-ray mode selected, the bottom vertex will not be selected. But if I activate the X-ray mode and I create a selection window, I can be sure that the bottom vertex is selected. So I can make a selection this way, okay? And using the move tool, I can move those vertices forward to make this shape round. Okay, so using the vertex selection mode, I can create windows and, sele and select this group of vertices, these groups of vertices, and adjust the shape of the wing so that it's kind of round like this. Very nice. Now I can turn off the X-ray mode because when we have it active, it can make the visualization of the model a bit confusing. So after using it, we can disable it right here in the button. Okay. I think that I need to make some adjustments here, moving these vertices down a bit to, to make the, this wind more straight. I think that's okay. And now I can start to, to create the fin of the airplane, that back fin that we have up here. So I will activate the face selection mode and I can activate the select box, box tool and select these four faces back here. Then I will activate the inset command and click and drag to create a new group of polygons. But I will not drag so much that it creates this messy cross down here. So I will just click and drag and make sure that it's not too much to make this back part nice and clean. Now I can adjust this shape so that it's thinner and re rectangular. So to do this I can activate the vertex selection mode and select these two vertices up here. And using the scale tool I can scale these two vertices on the x-axis. I will also move them back a bit, a bit with the move tool. Now I will do the same with these two center central vertices down here. Select them and with the scale tool, I will scale them down to make this shape rectangular. Looking from the top, the, this shape is nice, but if we rotate the view, we will see that this form is a bit strange okay so what i need to do to make things right here is to activate the move tool and move those pairs of vertices by selecting both and moving them up a bit so that the shape is straight as the original faces okay so i will also select these two vertices here in the center with the shift key and move them up a bit and I will also do it back here to make these new faces that we created with the inset tool nice maybe I can move these three vertices back a bit so that the thing goes all the way back there and now we are ready to extrude those faces. So I can activate the face selection mode up here and select these four faces 
and activate the extrude region command and now I will click and drag on the add icon to create the extrusion and now looking from the side I can start to adjust the form of the fin maybe I can start by scaling it on the y-axis to make it thinner and smaller on the top and scaling it down on the z-axis now I can move it until I find the right shape maybe scale it even more a bit so let me activate the scale command and make it smaller on both the Y and Z axis okay and now as we created these extra edges in the wings I'm going to create some extra edges with the loop tool here in the fin so that we can work on the shape of the fin to make it a bit more round so I, after using the loop cut I'm going to add another segment here in the number of cuts okay and now with these new loops we can start to work on the shape to make the front of the fin more round if we want so to do this I will activate the select box tool to select the vertices from both sides and activate the vertex selection mode and I need to activate the X-ray mode so that I am sure that when I select things from one side the vertex on the other side are also selected okay so now I can create a selection window to select these vertices here and move them forward a bit on the y-axis now let me select those vertices here and move them forward a, a bit on the y-axis and now I can repeat this process until I find the shape that I want now I can move these four vertices back a bit to make this front part very round maybe I can move those vertices here to the center and make them straight and what we are seeing here now is a perfect example of the kind of adjustment that we have to do when we are doing polygonal modeling okay this process needs a lot of adjustments so we need to select vertices move adjust select vertices move adjust all the time okay and now I can disable the x-ray mode because we finished the modeling of this side of the airplane so what we are going to do now is to mirror everything we model on the left side of the airplane to the other side and so that we can mirror a part of a model into the other side we have it we need to have it selected so in this case as we want to mirror everything we need to select all the components of the model it doesn't make any difference if it is in the vertex selection mode edge or faces okay we just have to select everything in any selection mode so we can press the A key to select all the components of the model then we go to the mesh menu up here and we are going to click on the symmetrize command okay mesh symmetrize when we do this blender will mirror everything from one side to the other but we need to pay attention in this panel down here because blender will not guess by itself which side and which axis you want it to mirror by default it mirrors the negative x to the positive x and in this case it was correct but if by chance you modeled your object in a different axis or modeled the thing that you want to mirror in the other side you might want to change the direction here in the symmetrize menu so in other situations will be very important that you understand how this menu here works okay 
So if, for example, I want to mirror everything that is back here in the model to the front, I will need to change in the menu here the axis and the orientation of the symmetries. So maybe we need to do some tests here until we find that in this case the correct answer is minus z to positive z, okay? Generally, I, I like to model my, my objects using the x-axis to the sides because it's the default for mirroring tools in Blender. So I'm going to leave it here as minus x to positive x as we have seen that it's the right direction for this object. But if by chance the elements that you want to mirror are in the other side, you just need to flip the direction and keep the axis here in the symmetrize menu. So for example, positive x to negative x. But in our case, it was negative x to positive x, okay? So just remember that after using the symmetrize command, maybe you need to check this field here, okay? And now, to finalize this lesson, I'm going to create a chamfer and a hole here in the front of the airplane, so that we can add, in another lesson, uh, the helix of the airplane here in the front, okay? So I will start by creating a chamfer in this front part, and for this I will activate the edge selection mode and select this loop here with the ALT tool, ALT key and with the SHIFT key pressed I will need to click on the other side to select the complete loop and I needed to do this because I have this edge here in the center okay so after selecting the entire loop I will activate the bevel command here in the toolbar and I will click and drag to create this chamfer Okay. Remember that you can adjust the size of the chamfer by going here in the panel. Okay, so we, you can open the panel and adjust the width, the size of the, the chamfer here. I think that this size will be nice. And now I can create the hole from where the helix will come out. So I will activate the face selection mode, select these two front faces here, and I will activate the inset faces too, and click and drag to create a small inset, like this. And now I can activate the extrude region tool, and click and drag to create an internal extrusion like this okay and with that I can leave the edit mode by going back to the object menu up here and with this we can consider the modeling done in the next lesson we are going to model the helix of the airplane so don't go away thank you for watching and I see you on the next lesson